Hey YouTube, this is Curious Guy, um, and this little video is really about making uh, PCB boards, a uh, home DIY method for uh, taking copper clad boards uh, and uh, etching patterns onto them. So this is a quick video because actually I've kind of done this already and I'm really just going to show you uh, the results that you can achieve at home and describe some of the some of the steps in the process and uh, I'll do a couple of videos on how I get to this stage of creating a, a template or an image on a piece of copper plated PCB board and then a little bit about how I've gone about etching it and uh, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll take it in stages. So this is sort of like the the end result if you like of starting with a copper board uh, This in this case it was a single sided board pretty standard stuff cut to shape and I have a, a template here now this template that I've used is um, something that uh, uh, well, as you can see here I've just printed it out onto uh, glossy paper the technique is really called toner transfer uh, the, or the toner transfer method uh, essentially what you want to do is you want to get uh, ideally a laser jet printer you can try a photocopier as well, but laser jets are, are I think, uh, are produce a, a better result. They, the ink in a laser jet printer isn't an ink; it's actually a toner. Uh, the distinction being that a toner is a is a very very fine plastic material, which is uh, basically fused onto the paper with a hot roller. Um, you know, it's a that's a very simple statement for for the complexity of a laser printer. But the result is that you get this uh, fantastic control. Uh, of a matte finish um, ink, in this case it's just a, a, a monochrome uh, printer that I have, a black printer, uh, with uh, uh, say a plastic ink essentially uh, creating uh, an image. Now in this case uh, I've used a, you can just see the shine of my overhead lamp on the paper, this is a glossy finished paper. Now this paper is really for creating photos in inkjet printers uh, to mimic the uh, the glossy finish of traditional photography. Um, so this is sort of like a cross-purpose paper. I've taken gloss finish photo paper, which is basically uh, 150 grams uh, per square meter paper. It's just a it's, it's a thick paper. It's not like a card or anything. Uh, it will fit my printer in terms of the the maximum uh, material thickness that I can use. Uh, I've printed it straight on. And laser jets obviously work different to ink jets. Ink jets will spray ink onto the paper and it will it will dry on the surface. Um, uh, whereas laser jets will actually melt the plastic onto the surface. So there's, there's a question about whether this paper is suitable for laser jets because there is a hot roller process and maybe that damages the surface and maybe you know there's a kind of an emulsion on the paper which is going to come off and destroy your printer. So you need to be a little bit careful about the actual gloss paper you use. Uh, mine was a fairly no-name brand from a local stationer shop. It, it's not very fancy at all. As I say, it just has a, a shiny, highly calendared surface. As far as I can tell, there's no emulsion, no, no extra chemical or layer of plastic or, or whatever on the surface. So um, what I did is I uh, actually was looking through a couple of old articles in QST magazine uh, from the American Radio Relay League. Um, in about 1979, uh, a, a chap called Doug DeMaw, um, I think his call sign is Whiskey One Foxtrot Bravo, um, who's well known in the, in the hobby of ham radio, uh, did a couple of articles um, on making PCB boards at home and described a few methods. And in that article from 1979, he, he created a little template like this, uh, which would be uh, a generic uh, board that kind of had a, a, an area for a common ground, perhaps, and, a, and, a, and this sort of central bar for a common positive. And then a series of uh, of grids of just squares where you could solder components and create um, uh, circuits. And this is um, kind of a, my version of that. The original version, I tried that uh, with, uh, again, copper plate. And this is actually a, from a photocopy of the original PDF form. Uh, and you can see it wasn't at all successful. This method was really taking the, the photocopy, putting it face down on the paper, and then ironing it on with uh, an old house iron and applying enough heat and pressure to to get the uh, paper uh, sorry the heat through the ink or the toner to fuse to the copper uh, it was one of my first attempts and uh, highly unsatisfactory it was um, and as you can see here uh, this result with my own version of the template um, is a lot more successful I think and again I'm going to do a video about how I've actually got to this stage um, basically, uh, I, I will say it's basically using a um, this paper, 
and a standard laminator, A4 sheet laminator for, you can get from a stationer. But uh, just one quick point, this uh, kind of simple grid pattern I've been able to achieve through Excel, uh, the software package of Microsoft Excel. All I've done is basically created uh, grids and lines of suitable widths and dimensions and then colored uh, certain squares black and that's it. So it's really easy to create uh, a number of shapes and you can see here I've made a larger version of that simply extending it so maybe that's a bit more useful uh, and uh, you know there's a couple of other versions in here some sort of in between perhaps not here, even smaller. So uh, in this video all I want to do is really see the, re the result uh, and one of the things with the inkjet, or sorry, with laser jet printers is the ink is not resistant to acetone. So if you have acetone, this should polish off relatively quickly. Uh, and in fact, acetone is one of the main ingredients of uh, nail polish remover. So uh, here we go. I've kind of raided the, the cupboard and, and I'm going to borrow this. It smells nice, but I don't recommend sniffing it. Um, so let's try and wipe this toner off. This, as you'll see, actually, this, this it doesn't look black anymore. Uh, you know, it's gone from this black ink. Of course, the ink is now face down, fused to the copper surface. This is actually the backing or the remains of the white paper that uh, uh, it makes up this material. In fact, the glossy surface is stuck to the toner. The toner is stuck to the to the uh, copper. And what you're seeing here is just the torn surface of the paper. It's kind of a soft, fluffy feeling. Um, uh, beneath the uh, the glossy surface. So let's just try and wipe this off and see the resulting copper. I have etched this uh, with uh, um, a process which I'll talk about in another video. So if I just get some uh, paper here. Let's see how this works. I'll just put the top on. Highly volatile stuff. And let's see what happens. There we go. Not too shabby. Probably needs a bit more work to fully finish the, uh, the rubbing. But uh, I think you can see that the copper is, uh, is pretty crisp, pretty good edge. Um, let's, uh, let's get a bit more polish and see if we can finish this on this video. be a little bit rough with it, but the copper is not going to go anywhere. All you're really trying to do is get rid of this ink, which has been fairly well pressed on by the laminating process. And, uh, yeah. Last dab. Okay, I think that's that's pretty good. Uh, there you go. Just copper where you want it. And I have to say that the etching process that I've adopted, which is uh, uh, you know, it's fairly standard. There's not that many choices for etching uh, in, in the home PCB DIY movement. Uh, this is actually using hydrochloric acid and sodium, uh, and sorry, and uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, to make uh, cupric chloride acid. But uh, the process is uh, really gives you quite a lot of control. Those are pretty sharp edges, and if you, well, you can't really see in this video, but the the letters here contain a pretty crisp A R. Yeah, the L, the B. Very impressive. Very like it. Okay, so there you go. Single-sided PCB boards can be made at home, and uh, you can get this kind of result, and I'm sure with more complex patterns, it'd be even more impressive. Well, thanks for watching, and I uh, look forward to uh, showing you how I get this uh, pattern, or any other pattern you might want care to print out onto, paper, onto the PCB board, and talk about the etching process. All right, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.